all 134 FBS teams, EA Sports, College Football 25. My rankings and one reason for each team as to why you should rebuild them first in Dynasty mode. If you stick around to the end, I'll give you bonus Road to Glory content where I'll tell you my favorite 10 schools to join on the offensive side of the ball and then 10 schools to join if you're gonna be a defender. Now here's how I set up the tier list. At the very top, we got the GOAT tier and that is reserved for you and only you for subscribing and soaking it up with your boy King Sponge. The rest of the tier list is self-explanatory. Group of five favorites, that's where I'll put my favorite group of five schools to rebuild and then power four favorites, same thing, my favorite power four schools to rebuild. Solid B options will fall in this tier and then we have our exclusive Mac Tough tier because the whole, let's be real, the whole Mac conference could use a rebuild. The mid tier. Lastly, schools that got me like, why though, will fall down at the bottom tier. At the very end, after the rankings are complete, I will go ahead and take five schools and move them up to the new tier, Sponge's favorites. I need to narrow down my pick for first dynasty rebuild on this channel, so the five comments that provide a rebuild candidate and get the most thumbs up down below will be automatic bids into my top 10. So let's bang this thing out, kicking off all 130 four FBS teams with none other than Air Force. They have a new quarterback stepping into their system, but I think what you see is what you get with the Falcons. It's a ground and pound option run scheme. Should be more of the same in the Mountain West. The Akron Zips, one of the worst teams in college football. Definitely Mac tough appropriate. It's going to be a grindy rebuild. And for that reason, if you're looking for the grindy rebuilds, it would probably fall in the group of five favorites. But for me, I've seen plenty of Akron rebuilds in NCAA 14. In fact, that is my last live dynasty rebuild on this channel so it's not gonna fall in the favorites for me alabama why though really not much to say here except new head coach kaylin DeBoer will look to take over the reins for nick saban and keep this juggernaut rolling appalachian state is a well-rounded team here in the sun belt they have conference championship aspirations and i think there's even a long shot chance of the 12 team playoffs coming into play here but this team's definitely a lock for a bowl game. Arizona State, Arizona State Sun Devils, a lot of question marks here. And for that reason, it is going to be my first favorite, a power four favorite here. Sun Devils, man, they have a lot of transfers brought in, but they were three and nine in the Pac-12 last year. It's not going to get easier in the Big 12. So with continued struggles, this will be a tough rebuild. After Arizona took down Oklahoma in the Alamo Bowl, they feel relatively loaded on offense and defense. So uh, that's something they couldn't say just a few years ago. Honestly, there's not much to rebuild here. They seem to be ready to compete in the Big 12. Arkansas State Red Wolves people are optimistic about this team, and they're optimistic about young quarterback Jalen Raynor at the helm. Arkansas State's head coach has not had a winning season in four straight years, so hey, maybe this is the year. And plus, who doesn't love the fact that you can make that waterfall spout hey, every yep. time you score a touchdown? Moving right along to the Arkansas Razorbacks, this is a power four favorite of mine. They have been shaky the last couple seasons here in the SEC. It's a vicious conference. The offensive line has question marks. New quarterback Taylor Green is in town from the Mountain West. There's plenty of tests to go around this first season, and they're a good candidate to rebuild. Army, just like Air Force and other service academies, honestly, I can make a case to put them all up into group of five favorites. I'm not gonna do that in this case. However, Army did change up their offensive identity and that led to four straight wins at the end of last season. It's a tough rebuild. All service academies usually are, so that's why they're there. Auburn, War Eagle, that's right, they're going to power four favorites. They've been struggling the last handful of seasons and they went six and seven last year, lost the Music City Bowl to Maryland. I wonder if Peyton Thorne can be that dude this year to lead him forward. Ball State, another Mac tough team. I don't need to provide much analysis for that whole conference is in shambles, honestly. Baylor Bears, what could fans even get excited about last season? They lost seven of eight games at home and they had one of the worst defenses in all the Big 12. So the offense is relatively new. A lot of new pieces, including Mac player of the year, Finn at quarterback. Definitely a good candidate. I think is worth jumping in to fix. Ah, uh, yes. I'll be a little bit biased here for a moment. Boise State Broncos. That's where I went to graduate school. So I had to put them up on this list. They are group of five royalty more often than not. Good chance at getting to the 12 team playoffs. And they got guys like Ashton Genty, all American candidate 
Malachi Nelson, good transfers, uh, plenty of fun to play on the blue field. Boston College went 3-5 and five in the ACC last season. They have quarterback Castellanos looking to break out. New head coach Bill O'Brien. And in general, it's just going to be tough to recruit in a competitive ACC landscape. Boston's not going to be at the top of the list for many guys. Bowling Green, Mac Tough. Buffalo Bulls, definitely Mac Tough worthy here. However, since I've rebuilt and played as much of these other teams in the Mac, I haven't done a whole lot with Buffalo. So because of that nature, it's a favorite for me. They actually seem to struggle year in year out BYU's on the cusp for me however I'm going to give them a good tier rebuild they did not make a bowl game for the first time since 2017 they ended their season on a five game losing streak the transition to the power four should continue to have its struggles for this group Cal good nah we're bumping it up to power four favorites and here's why this group struggled in the Pac-12 last season and now they have to convince people in the state of California their perspective recruits to play in the ACC that will travel to the Atlantic coast. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Central Michigan, Mac tough, always needing a rebuild. Charlotte 49ers bouncing right up here to my group of five favorites. They are a bottom tier school. Last year, the head coach predicted they would finish first in their conference. Instead, they finished three and nine. So uh, struggling on both sides of the ball. They brought in Florida quarterback Max Brown, but I think they're still going to need a lot of help. Cincinnati is bringing in some experienced defenders in the secondary, but is that enough to really reinvigorate a subpar offense? and team that went one and eight in the Big 12 last year. Clemson Tigers, why though? Cade Klubnick is looking to take a leap forward at quarterback, but let's be real, Clemson does not really need a rebuild. They've been built up for a while now. Coastal Carolina, they have played a good brand of football in the past, but that is the past. We're now looking ahead to this year and beyond. They lost their guy McCall, who moved on, and other dudes transferred out for NIL reasons. So there are some question marks on this team this year. I still think it could finish in the top half of the Sun Belt, but uh, the future is a little more murky. Colorado State, three wins two years ago, five wins last year, seven wins this year. Rams are getting better, still have room for improvement, but be on the lookout for a bull bid for these guys. Primetime football is going to make it to my favorites list. That's right. They started off 3-0 and last season, then finished 4-8. and Improvement is expected across the board with a lot of eyes on the offensive line. So this should be a really fun team to jump in with, you know, all the eyes on primetime, Shadur, Travis Hunter, and then finding a way to take it up a notch to rebuild a sustainable program. Duke Blue Devils projected to finish 14th in the ACC. It's a new look over there in that conference. They got a new coach. They have a new quarterback who transferred in from Texas. Malik Murphy should be a fun choice. One of the worst teams in the FBS last season, East Carolina was hot trash. They scored a league low 22 touchdowns, only averaging 17.3 points per game, which is bottom five in the FBS. So SOS to the Pirates. Eastern Michigan, Mac tough candidate for sure. However, I'm going to bounce it up to one of my favorites because of that exact toughness, the gray turf, the mantra. They have some of the grittiest players in the Mac. However, they need to load up on talent because this team feels a little dry and that makes them a good rebuild candidate. Florida Atlantic, a fast paced system with no offensive spark. I think they're trending up, but honestly, that's going to be one of those Mac level tough rebuilds, even though they're not in the Mac. Continuing in the state of Florida, FIU is going to be one of my favorites. They have dual threat Keontae Jenkins. He looks pretty fun to build around, but that's about it. They need to rebuild all over the place and defense is especially of concern as their bottom 10 in turnover margin. Florida State, why though? The only reason you really do it is because you believe they got snubbed from the playoffs and you want to take out your vengeance on the video game, winning them that chip year one. Florida Gators, definitely a power four favorite of mine. They have struggled the last couple seasons. In fact, it was the worst record by a head coach at Florida since 1979. And so I think there is potential for talent and depth here from the Gators, but likely a bottom third finish in the SEC. Fresno State, mid. Honestly, they're a really consistent Mountain West team that wins and looks to compete for a championship year in, year out. Georgia Southern is a favorite of mine. They are an aggressive passing attack with a 62% clip last year. With the aggressive attack, however, leads to a lot of turnovers, and they tied for first in the FBS with Nebraska. Georgia State won the Idaho Potato Bowl in decisive fashion last year. However, there is a new coach in town 
shown and a new foundation being set, so they might take a step back before going forward. Georgia Tech, this team is on pace to be competitive again, a great rushing attack, averaging 204 yards per game last year. They got returning starters like quarterback Haynes King as well. Defense needs a makeover, but it's a good choice for a middle of the pack ACC team. Georgia, why though? They have one of the most talented and deepest rosters in all of college football. Hawaii is a team that has been struggling to get over the hump for a while now. It's just a really tough place, I think, to build a dynasty. I mean, imagine you're recruiting and you have to convince players to come out to Hawaii. You may think that's easy, but have them stick around for four years on a subpar team. It's not as easy as it looks. Since competing for the title game in the American Conference in 2021, Houston has regressed in a big way. The Big 12 has proven to be difficult. They're projected to finish last this upcoming season, and they were ranked 100th or worse in every defensive category, so it's time to turn them around. Illinois, this team just screams average to me. They had five wins last year. They're projected to be in the bottom half of the Big 10. I guess that could be enough for you to rebuild them. The Indiana Hoosiers led now by quarterback Curtis Rourke from the Ohio Bobcats. They also brought in a new coach from James Madison. Kurt, he hasn't had a losing season in the last 13 years coaching. However, this is definitely going to be his toughest test yet with arguably the worst team in the Big Ten. Iowa State is mid to me because they have a young core, a talented cast around them. Rocco and Abu are a good one-two punch. I think they're already on the come up they've done the rebuilding it's time for them to keep competing at the big 12 level the hawkeyes classic iowa problem here good defense bad offense rinse and repeat jacksonville state this is a fun team they've had early success in the fbs a bowl victory last year and a good offense i don't think they really necessarily need to rebuild as they're doing all the right things getting momentum in real life but it would be fun to take them over the edge. James Madison, an 11 win team last year. I was debating putting them at mid or good. I think I'm gonna bump them up to good just because they lost their head coach. There was a lot of roster turnover. So I'm not expecting the same 11 win team, which could be a good reason why you need to jump back in and make sure they're competitive in the Sun Belt. The Kansas State Wildcats, my alma mater from undergrad here, definitely at the top of the list, the best rebuild you can choose in the game. Just kidding. I'll I'll drop them down to mid even though i'll be playing a dynasty as them realistically that's a good thing because they're already a good team in real life and they're upgrading at the quarterback position with avery johnson as a true freshman he rushed for five touchdowns in one game and then in his first start the pop tarts bowl he got pop tart bowl mvp man is gonna be taking that next step can't forget the experienced defense that makes the cats dangerous so look out for these guys in the big 12 jalen daniels needs to stay healthy for kansas and honestly this team team is experienced and have their best shot right in front of them to get a big 12 title this upcoming season as much as it pains me from a wildcat a couple of years ago this would have been a prime power four option to rebuild but they have been doing a lot of that rebuilding in real life so uh, honestly at current day they're pretty good they'll be a mid-tier rebuild kennesaw state hands down the easiest choice ever for a group of five rebuild or rebuild in general they're projected to be the worst in conference usa the worst team in all of the fbs and they're coming off a three and six season at the fcs level it's a heavy zone read rpo type offense so expect them to be outmatched outsized in a lot of these games Kent State, congratulations, you avoid the Mac tough category and go straight to favorites. I have to put the worst team in all the FBS last season at the favorites list. It, it's only fitting. Kentucky is a good candidate for a rebuild. They have some weapons they brought in on both sides of the ball via the transfer portal. However, the offensive line just does not seem to be intact and at the level needed for SEC play. So that's the biggest question mark. And if they can hang on, that's good things for them in the SEC. But realistically, it's going to be a bottom half SEC finish. Another really, really fun playthrough in Dynasty would be Liberty, but I have to put them at mid just because they are an established winning program right now. They are defending Conference USA champions. They're a popular choice to crack the 12-team playoffs. They just don't need a rebuild right now as much fun as it would be. Now talk about a team that does need a rebuild and badly. It's University of Louisiana Monroe. They went 2-10 and last year, 0-8 in the Sun Belt. They are 10-26 and over the last three seasons. The only team that's probably going to be worse than these guys is Kennesaw State, but who knows? The Owls could even shock and be better than Louisiana Monroe. We do know that University of Louisiana Monroe here is 
in dire need of a rebuild after this last rebuild attempt did not work out. Not many bright spots for Louisiana Tech. They only had three wins last year. It's going to be a Mac tough, grindy rebuild. A lot of their production turned over and honestly not much to be optimistic about for this upcoming season or the near future. Raging Cajuns are typically a good, tough Sun Belt team. They only had six wins last season. They do have some good depth in returning production on both sides of the ball. So maybe they'll be back to their typical six to seven win self, maybe better, who knows. Louisville, why though? 10 and four last season and they're getting even better not really a need to rebuild them lsu another why though type team they're always in the conversation with talent recruiting personnel they just had quarterback Jaden daniels head off to the nfl their recent heisman winner um, so i don't expect the talent recruiting personnel to go anywhere marshall on the other hand is an intriguing rebuild option one of my favorites here they're stepping into an air raid scheme so we'll see how the first season adjustments go but it's been pretty mediocre football the last few seasons, which is a good reason to rebuild them. Talia Tagovailoa has graduated, so it's going to be a new look and feel for quarterback at Maryland. However, this team is usually pretty good, seemingly always on the verge, but never quite there to take that next step and compete at a higher level in the Big Ten. Miami Hurricanes are a good team, which is why I have them at mid-tier. They had a lot of success in the transfer portal, bringing in some studs like Cam Ward to lead them at quarterback. They do need to turn it up however, after a couple of years of mediocre football. That's right, I'm putting a MAC team at mid. It's the Miami Red Hawks. They had an extremely successful season last year, and they are by far the best team in the MAC, in my opinion. The Red Hawks should be a force and coast right on through that conference. So it's going to be difficult and would be even a better rebuild if you took them out of the MAC and, you know, made it more of a challenge. Michigan State Spartans, or should I say the Michigan State Beavers? Just kidding, but they did snag a few transfers from Oregon State, and they also have some intriguing young guys on the roster like Antonio Gates Jr., but there's no denying this team is at the bottom and projected to finish at the bottom, and they'll have plenty of tests along the way. Michigan, this team is terrible and absolutely needs a rebuild. Just kidding. They are defending national champs. They have some new faces, but why? What's what's the point of rebuilding? Middle Tennessee, another mediocre, rather dull football program of late. Someone needs to get in there and help them get out of the pit that they've been in. Minnesota Golden Gophers took a step back last year. It's going to fall under my power conference favorites because they have a really tough schedule, and they're really just an average group. Mississippi State ranks higher, though, for me in a Power 4 favorite rebuild because this team looks completely brand new. The entire offense has no returning starters. There's two returning starters on defense. They went 1-7 in the SEC last year. It's going to take a lot to get these guys to a bowl game. Missouri Tigers are honestly loaded on both sides of the ball. Luther Burden III is a top dog wide receiver in all of the nation, and so he's a great candidate to force feed the rock when you're playing college football 25. Just spam him. I don't care about wear and tear, nothing. Just force feed him the rock. He'll make something happen. Navy is going to get the bump up from Air Force and Army to group of five favorite because let's be real, they're actually probably the worst of the three service academies and they're running a variation of the wing T system that hasn't really paid off yet. It's just unimpressive on both sides of the ball. Nebraska to me is a clear cut power four favorite. They had the 11th ranked defense in the nation last year and the unit should be tough again. With such a good defense, how did they struggle so much and have such a poor record while well, the offense has been stuttering for years and that should change with a jolt of life from freshman Dylan Rayola at the helm it should make things fun and competitive for the next few years, which is why you should jump in. I'm going to keep it a buck here. Nevada easily could be a favorite for some people that want that extremely hard rebuild. They were 2-10. They're projected to be the worst in the Mountain West again. A bowl game seems light years away. However, it's just it's Mac tough. It's extremely grindy, going to be extremely hard. Not necessarily a favorite of mine. New Mexico State had a great year last year. They even beat Auburn along the way. However, there's been a ton of roster and coaching turnover, so I think a step back is rather imminent here. They should be one of the weakest teams in the nation and honestly a good candidate to rebuild. I put Nevada at Mac tough, and I definitely could put Lobos at Mac tough as well, but I'll go ahead and put them as a favorite because it has been an underdog team for as long as I can remember. 
remember it. It's a Mountain West team with its fair share of struggles from recruiting, transfers, personnel. They just need a serious revamp in every area. North Carolina State, Grayson McCall, transfer quarterback from Coastal Carolina, is here. They went 9-4 and four last season, and there's a real chance they step it up again and compete for an ACC championship. North Carolina, I'm going to put at good tier level. There are just a lot of question marks here with Drake May leaving to the NFL. The defense is pretty inconsistent. There are some holes that need to be addressed, and they're projected to finish middle of the pack ACC. North Texas is a Jekyll and Hyde team. I absolutely love them as a rebuild candidate. They average nearly 500 yards per game on offense, but on the other side of the coin, they gave up nearly 500 yards per game on defense. Clearly, there is a lot of work to do. NIU just fits the mold of a middle tier Mac tough team. Northwestern, these guys are a favorite power for rebuild. They continue to struggle forming an offensive identity, whereas the defense is usually pretty solid. Regardless, the Big Ten is going to be rough and tough, and I project them to finish at the bottom half. Notre Dame, I mean, come on, it's the Irish. A lot of big recruits coming in. Most years, they are putting together a solid contending team. Ohio State, this team is stacked on both offense and defense. It feels like they can go the distance unless something goes horribly wrong. Ohio Bobcats actually had a solid season for the MAC last year, but I think they're going to go right back into the MAC rough and tough tier. They were hit hard by departures, including Curtis Work. So uh, give it up for a grindy school. Oklahoma State, pretty low down here on the mid tier, in my opinion. They brought all their starters back essentially, and Ollie Gordon's going to go for Heisman. This feels a little strange for me, and maybe you guys won't like it in the comment section. But Oklahoma Sooners, this is a power four favorite to rebuild for me. It really, like I said, feels strange because they're always competing year in, year out. A tough program. However, they have had the gas run out on them the last three years in the Big 12, and then now moving into an SEC conference that's arguably harder, they are going to have their hands full and more than likely, realistically, finish in the middle of the pack. I do believe they need some help getting back over the edge and competitive in the SEC, which is why I think it's a fun favorite choice for a rebuild. Old Dominion, definitely a group of five favorite as they still have their guy, Jason Henderson, one of the best linebackers in all of college football. He led the FBS in tackles last two seasons. However, he is like the only bright spot on offense. So uh, trending towards an upswing, I guess you could say this season, they can always do so much better. Old Miss is another one of those loaded teams that have landed huge transfer portal players and heavy returning production. It's going to be a team to watch out for this year. Oregon State Beavers have been competitive lately, but the Pac-12 dismantlement has hit them hard as they've lost a lot of guys to the portal, and I just don't expect them to be as talented as previous seasons. Oregon Ducks, another team with one of the most talented rosters in all of football. Quarterback Dylan Gabriel should step right in and continue excellence there. Penn State, why though? There are definitely teams on this tier that have the leg up on them in terms of talent, but they're almost always around the conversation, especially with this new 12-team playoff format. Pitt is a power four favorite of mine to rebuild. They have a very fast tempo offense, but really inexperienced defense. Three and nine last year, two and six in the ACC. It's a new look conference. It's a good choice for rebuild. This is probably the worst team in the Big Ten. Definitely a day one rebuild candidate. Solid portal play in recruiting is really overshadowed just by the daunting schedule and roster that does not line up to other teams in their conference. Rice has the top returning pass defense in the American Conference, but the offense without JT Daniels and Luke McCaffrey needs to prove themselves early if they're going to get things rolling this year. Rutgers are getting better, still building. They like to run the ball a lot if that's your type of team with a 62% clip. Sam Houston has got to get the offense moving this year, 111th in the nation at 19.6 points per game. We need to see some of these pieces continue to come together. Sam Houston will have likely more than their fair share of struggles again, so it's a good candidate to rebuild. The Aztecs have had quite a fall from grace recently in the Mountain West. They used to be tough year in and year out, and now it just feels like there are a whole bunch of question marks at every level of this team. The 7-6 and six Spartans from 
last year are definitely turning the page as 18 starters are departing. It might get worse before it gets better for this group. South Alabama, a sleeper in the Sun Belt Conference. That exactly might be the case. They had a good year last year with a decisive win over Eastern Michigan in their bowl game. So look for them to be competitive. South Carolina had a losing season last year with Rattler at the helm. Now there's a new quarterback and arguably one of the hardest schedules I've ever laid eyes on. So uh, look out for Gamecock fans to jump in and rebuild these guys right away. USF would have been in my favorite list a couple of years ago, but now they're only a good tier option because they have been making the jump. They have rebuild momentum on their side. Only four wins in the previous three years. Last year, they had seven. SMU is jumping up from the group of five to the power four from the American to the ACC. However, they're just good tier because honestly, they have a roster in skill positions that should allow them to jump right in and compete in the ACC in year one. Southern Miss is a favorite of mine as they went three in nine last season. This year, they're without Frank Gore Jr. and they're being asked to take production up another level. How are you gonna do that when you have seemingly no talent. So coming to a dynasty near you, Golden Eagles are a good choice. Stanford, definitely an S tier rebuild here, sort of like Cal. They are a new look team in the ACC. They only finished three and nine in the Pac-12, but now they're gonna have to compete with Atlantic Coast teams, recruiting, all of that jazz, they're projected to finish last. So get these guys some help. Syracuse would have been a favorite of mine literally probably just last year, but now I'm gonna put them at good tier because they have some veterans returning, key transfers joining the team, and an easier slate this year than they did last year. So uh, I still think they need help, but watch out for them to get back to a bowl game. Temple, this team got absolutely wrecked by the transfer portal. They need help just about everywhere. This will be a struggle rebuild projected to finish last in the American. Tennessee, Nico is going to be a fun quarterback to rebuild around. Probably one of the best bowls that they've had in their system. The D-line is primed, ready to go. The pieces are there. It's just can they put it together and compete at the highest level in the SEC. Texas A&M football is a good choice for a rebuild. They were a seven-win team. They'd lost a lot of people to the transfer portal. Added a few guys back but there is a brand new coaching staff and it should make for an intriguing rebuild. TCU is another good rebuild choice as it's crazy how the tide has turned on this team. They had national championship aspirations just the other year to only winning five games last season. There's been swings up and down. I don't expect them to fall off a cliff. They should be competitive if they can get it together. Expectations are sky high for the Texas State Bobcats. That's something we have not been able to say for ever, I guess. Uh, they put together an impressive campaign. They won the first responder bowl last year and they have a lot of dudes coming back. So they've got the pieces here in play. And if the defense can compete, they'll be really tough again. Texas Tech is a middle of the pack Big 12 team. I think that makes for a good rebuild. They have their quarterback running back tandem still intact, but they lost a lot of defense. Longhorns usually a top offense and defensive team. They have national championship aspirations and SEC conference championship aspirations in their first year over there. I don't think there's really much of a need to rebuild with Quinn Ewers leading the way again. Toledo is a good option for rebuild. They're sitting at the top of the Mac. They have a really solid defense. They have an offense that lost some pieces, but I think they have the athletic dudes and talent to just still be competing at the top of the Mac. Troy won 11 games last season. They're usually pretty good at the group of five level. They did flip over the roster with a new head coach. So a little bit of unpredictability here, but a pretty solid team year in, year out. Tulane in terms of a rebuild, pretty mid choice, but because of their drippy uniforms, I'm gonna bump them up to good. That's right. They are usually a good team year in, year out. We know what we're gonna get. It's pretty consistent. Tulsa is an interesting case for sure. They are a bottom tier team. They have room for improvement practically at every position. They have a six year senior running back. That's probably the only dude worth noting on offense. And not to mention the coach is anti-NIL. He doesn't want his players getting that bag. The Blazers have quarterback Zeno returning. He put up pretty good stats for the school last season. However, this team's just not very good. They also struggle at the recruiting front. So uh, a good candidate 
to rebuild. UCF to me sounds like a fun, balanced rebuild experience here in the Power Four. They were the only Big 12 newcomer to reach six wins. And then in the transfer portal, they went out and got KJ Jefferson from Arkansas. So it looks like to me, UCF could be a good sleeper team in the Big 12. But after he graduates and this team kind of turns over a little bit, they're still going to need that rebuild to get them consistently in the top of the Big 12. Seems like a good mix of immediate fun and contention, but then in the long run, they still need the build. It's a new era and path forward for UCLA in the Big Ten. Unfortunately, the defense, which was a highlight this last season, is taking a major step back with some key pieces departing. Will UConn prove that they are more than a basketball school? Probably not this year. Some scouts believe that UMass is worse than a handful of other FCS teams out there. So what does that mean in terms of college football 25? It means you got to go rebuild them. UNLV, this team should not be slept on. They had nine wins last year and they're pretty loaded on offense. The only real question is the quarterback as the defense should improve as well. USC is still pretty talented even without Caleb Williams at the helm. They should be in the thick of it for the Big Ten. Utah State was 123rd in defensive scoring, giving up 34.7 points per game. Also hit hard by the transfer portal, losing over 20 guys from NIL enticements. They should be a bottom half Mountain West team, but they do got glimpses of potential. I especially like Jalen Royals, who should be tearing it up at receiver for the Mountain West. Utah Utes, why though? They were already pretty competitive before joining the Big 12, and now that they've joined a new conference, they should be ready to compete in year one. UTEP, a minor should be projected to finish as the fourth worst team in all of the FBS. The Roadrunners years ago would have been a prime candidate to rebuild, but now it's just a good option. I mean, they did lose their best player in program history, Frank Harris, so they're going to have to fill the hole there. But it seems like once all the dust has settled from the portal, they have still remained competitive with a good roster looking to take the field next year. Vanderbilt has overhauled their schemes, overhauled their rosters. Vandy has brought in some additional experience from the transfer portal, but it's going to take a whole lot more to turn this ship around from a 2-10 season last year. Virginia and Virginia Tech. I'll start with the Cavaliers. They're a power four favorite. They were dead last in ACC scoring defense last season. Ineffective pass rush. They had a lot of inconsistencies on offense. They should be competing for the basement with teams like Stanford. Virginia Tech, unlike the Cavaliers, have shown glimpses of success with good recruiting, a lot of returning production. There's a good amount of sleeper potential here. Wake Forest, this team was competing just a couple seasons ago, but last season and this season doesn't seem to be the same case. They were 4-8 and eight and had one of the worst offensive performances they've seen as a school since 2015. Washington State, one of the remaining two Pac-2 teams, they have eight games this year lined up against the Mountain West, should be competitive in terms of their schedule. However, they still need a longer-term rebuild. All right, I might catch some smoke for this one, but I'm putting the Huskies as a power four favorite to rebuild just after they came off the national championship game. That's right, they're this high for me. It's because this is not the same team. It's completely different. And to prove my point, there is not one returning starter on the offense, and there's only two returning defenders on defense. Realistically, they're headed to the bottom half of the Big Ten this upcoming season, and that's my why. West Virginia looks good with Garrett Green in returning offensive production. They also went out and got some experience at defense, so I think they're looking at an improvement from nine wins last year. Hilltoppers are a fun group of five team, but in terms of a rebuild, they've actually been pretty competitive in Conference USA for a while now. They also went out and added TJ Finley from Texas State, as well as some other offensive acquisitions to replace guys like Malachi Corley who went off to the NFL draft. Defense is the question, but a Conference USA championship is very much still in the cards. Western Michigan should do better than the 4-8 and eight record they had last season. They have a lot of returning experience, but it's very upperclassmen heavy. And so once this class graduates, maybe get some six wins or so in this upcoming season, it's going to be right back to square one, which is why they're a prime candidate. Wisconsin had some mixed results last season. They moved to an air raid offense and they're hopeful this year is much better they can be competitive in the big 10 but realistically it looks like a middle of the pack team last but certainly not least we have the wyoming cowboys and yeah it's a prime time candidate for a rebuild i get it they've won six bowl games in the last seven years which is impressive 
but to me, they're always going to be a top candidate for a rebuild because it's going to take a lot to put them towards the apex of college football, to the apex of the Mountain West in general. And you want to know why? For starters, it's the state of Wyoming. How are you going to recruit guys out there? What's the spiel? Laramie, Wyoming is pretty remote. Okay, okay. That is all 134 FBS teams ranked on the tier list. Now you can tell I added an extra row. I'm going to take five teams that I believe should move up to a tier of their own. My personal opinion, my favorite five schools to look at for rebuild. With the first pick up with the first pick of my top five draft, I am selecting Stanford as a prime candidate to rebuild. With the second pick, I have my eyes set on UMass. I think that would be a fun independent school to get right. After further review, I am gonna select Houston as my next team to join the top five. They are gonna be arguably the worst team in the Big 12. My fourth pick goes to none other than North Texas Mean Green. Last but not least, I'm gonna go ahead and snag Arkansas State to round out my top five. This doesn't mean I think these five schools are gonna be the hardest rebuilds by no means i think they would be the most fun in my opinion minus the brand new schools like kennesaw state sam houston of course they need to rebuild and would be fun and minus the fact that i went to boise state and kansas state in real life so obviously those are s tier rebuilds for me as well so that is a final look at king sponge's rankings for dynasty mode in ea sports college football 25 i hope this tier list was helpful in assisting you as you navigate the decision the big decision to choose your first team in college football 25. Make sure you drop down in the comment section the best rebuilds for EA college football 25 because remember the top five comments with the most likes will get added to my top 10 consideration set. Now I did promise bonus road to glory content for those that stuck around you get yourself a treat. I'm going to give you 10 teams right now who I think are S tier choices on offense for road to glory. Now sifting through the list our first team we're snagging out of here s tier offense road to glory choice is the liberty flames a lot of good production returning to this team and you can make a difference with this high powered conference usa team i feel like i need to clarify real quick i'm not going to give you teams like alabama or schools that are continually producing year in year out that is just an obvious choice like if you want to go play for a powerhouse that's on you i'm going to give you some creative options here and with creative options, next up, App State. That is another good team primed this year for another bull run and beyond. So go play for the Mountaineers. I mentioned it earlier in the Dynasty tier list, but North Texas on offense averaged nearly 500 yards per game and their defense is toast. So you'll be on the field all day long trying to score points. UCF was a productive unit last year. Now you got KJ Jefferson, an experienced quarterback, throwing you the rock. And if you want to be quarterback, well, he's graduating in a year as well. So good team here to do some damage. Memphis Tigers, one of the highest scoring offenses in terms of points per game. So go ahead and get in on the action. I talked about the Bulls and their resurgence as a college football team the offense is coming together with some solid pieces you can get in there and take them to the next level i would be silly not to include boise state on this list playing on the blue turf is one key factor to do it but two you got transfer malachi nelson a good quarterback and then you get an all-american running back as well as some other productive pieces around the edges so you'll get in there get your time get your mentorship and take them over the hump texas state lost their quarterback to the portal however they've had one of the most successful seasons in their entire program's history so it's a good wave to catch if you didn't watch much ku football last year you wouldn't have realized that they are a sneaky good offense and they continue to get better this year it's a little upperclassman heavy but that's perfect for a freshman in road to glory west virginia a solid team a solid Solid choice in the Big 12 where games sometimes become very high scoring and very fast. Coastal Carolina has been a productive squad over the last handful of years. I mentioned they had some question marks in the dynasty tier list, but you could be the answer to solve one of those question marks. So there you go. Those are my picks for road to glory offense. Let's jump into the list for defense. It's going to follow a similar process. We looked at the stats, looked at units that performed well overall as a defense. And believe it or not, the Bobcats were one of those good teams in the Mac. So if you want to start from the bottom and work your way into a good Mac team, choose the Bobcats. Maybe you'll hit the portal in a couple of years. I don't know. Or you'll stay true and bring them a championship. Have you ever thought about a service academy? Well, Air Force would be a great choice for you as they dominate in terms of clock control. 
in essence, that helps a stingy defense get stingier. Nebraska has a lockdown defense. The offense is just finally starting to get some hope. However, it's upperclassmen heavy. Great opportunity for you to join and watch this team surge. Troy has produced some good results over the last handful of years, including some good defenders to go to the NFL. It's a good choice. Rutgers like playing a little bit of smash mouth football, ground and pound on offense, and then relying on a good defense to keep them in ball games. That's exactly what they do in a tougher division. It should be a good opportunity for you to get your crack. SMU had a really good defense in the American Conference. However, Ever, they are now in the ACC, so they're going to have a whole host of new tests. So why don't you join the Mustangs and play some lockdown defense? UCLA really had a top-end defense last year. Some guys left for the NFL, other guys departed, others graduated. What I'm trying to say here is this top-tier defense isn't as top-tier anymore, but it's a great team to plug into and hold down the fort. Virginia Tech, this is a fun sleeper team all around, so I think it'd be great to join the action and help get the Hokies over the edge. Miami's offense is improving, their defense should also be improving, and you too can contribute to the rise of the Hurricanes again. My last pick for this list is the South Alabama Jaguars. Yes, the Jaguars, they had an impressive campaign last year. Defense did their part and in essence blew out their opponent in the bowl game, so you can be the reason reason they go the distance and maybe get a crack at the 12 team college football playoffs all right folks i hope you soaked it up as i did my best to give you educational bits as well as my opinion to hopefully help guide you down that path for teams to consider in dynasty and road to glory in essence as you can tell i'm very excited for the new game and i can't wait to bring so many bangers to this channel so you don't want to miss it join the ride keep soaking it up with the sponges it's been your boy we out